Welcome back to BS with Brian Simpson. We 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 we're hopping right into it. Let's let's let, let's knock out the questions. First of all, first of all, if you want to support the podcast, just uh, like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, if you got any questions for the advice champ, email me at BS with Brian Simpson at gmail dot com. And um, if you um, if you want to come see me live. On tour, go to BrianSimpsonComedy.com. Um, I'm gonna be real busy in the next in the coming weeks, man. I'm, you know, the Wilbur Theater is still tickets for that. Uh, on the 11th, uh, Bell House in Brooklyn on the 12th, Oklahoma City, um, Calgary, Canada, Cleveland, Ohio, um, Chicago, Houston. Um, that's gonna be the whole tour there. The Calgary thing just got added. So we'll 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 do this. All right, uh, let's get into the daggone emails. Remember that's BrianSimpsonComedy.com for the tickets. Um here. This is from C D. BS, uh, I believe VR haters can be convinced it is cool. Ever thought about trying it out? VR? Oh yeah. I mean, listen, VR is cool. Um, I just think it's not at a place where it's as accessible because it requires, you know, because look, I've had Oculuses, I've had the 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 Valve headset, all of those things. The the problem is to do VR, you need space, which is a which is an additional thing to need. For a gamer, right? Whereas, whereas, like my PC, my gaming PC is set up in there. When I want to game, I just sit down, I game. But if I want to game in VR, I need the PC and the headset and space. You know, it, or just same thing with with the Oculus. It's like it's one of them things. Where like every single person I know that has an Oculus did the same thing. They got that motherfucker. They played the fuck out of it for two to six weeks, and then they never take that shit out the box. Because it's something you got to prepare for, and it's in competition with things that are already readily available. You got games on your phone. You got games on your PC. Some people, you got a Steam Deck. Some people got a gaming laptop or whatever. But you just turn those on, and you game, and you don't got to do nothing else. You know, and for, you know, most VR games, like I said, you need somewhere where you're able to, you know, have enough space to move around. And... um And and it's and it's kind of it's kind of a pain. And they haven't figured out a way. What, what I don't understand is why they insist on having the battery in the headset. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like I like what Apple did with the uh, with the. Uh, it's like give me a big ass battery belt or something I can wear and plug into the headset so I can game for longer. That's another thing I got to keep. The headset charged up, and it's you know it's you get a couple hours out of that, three four hours, you know, and that's that's fine. But it's it's just it's a lot of it's a lot of butts. It's a lot of additional things you need to do VR that you don't need to do any other kind of gaming. And it, and th- yeah, the knock on VR is not that it isn't cool. It's just if it, it feels like the barrier to entry is just a little higher because even you know the majority of of actual gamers feel like it's more of a pain in the ass than it than it's worth. You know, and don't get me wrong, every time I've every now and then I'll fucking dust that motherfucker off and put it on and go, yeah, this is cool as shit. But um but to get, you know, three or four of my friends to do it all too at the same time too, uh, you just don't get you don't get that. Like you get out there Space Marine. Um by the way, Space Marine too, please Give us better skill trees. The skill trees are trash. Let's be honest. Most of the nodes are useless. You're waiting forever to get to the useful ones. I, you know, I, I'm I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the skill trees, but the game is still amazing. I hope they keep supporting it um, uh, till till the end of time. All right. Next email. <clears throat> Hi Brian. I, I've emailed a few times. Uh, and included the Beaver Pussy cartoon image at the end of each email I sent. The show previous to today uh, 
September 24th. Oh, no, 28th of September. Okay. You had asked if the image was my artwork. It's not my artwork. I Googled Beaver Pussy, and it's one of the images that came up. But how good would that look on a shirt or hat? Hopefully, the person who generated the image will reach out to the show. As always, love the podcast, man, and I hope this email finds you in great spirits. Um, Alex from California. All right. Well, thank you, Navy veteran Alex. Um, I just noticed the beaver image has a clip. Oh, that is true. That belongs on there. Yeah, maybe that person will reach out. Maybe we can get somebody to draw an original. Um, we'll see. But keep it tight, Beaver Puss. Appreciate you. Brian, you have definitely become my favorite comedians. Plural. That's weird. Maybe he meant one of my favorite comedians. I've seen you perform a couple of times at the Mothership, and your YouTube special was uh, amazing work. I don't have a YouTube special. Um, you, you have, do you think, do you think I'm someone else? You have premises that are incredibly original and your point of view is uniquely your own. Your comedy has layers. Thank you. My question is about your relationship with the mothership and how you ended up hosting regular shows there. Was it a previous relationship in LA with Adam Rogan or both? Did the opportunity inspire your move to Austin or did you end up here and the regular shows grew out of proximity. Apologies if you've covered this before, or if it seems too inside baseball. I'm just curious. Kudos to the mothership for recognizing and giving it home to what has to be one of the best in the game right now. Thanks for making Austin home an Austin comedy fan. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, I mean, it's all those things. Um, I did not have a relationship with Rogan in L.A., um, what happened is I was about to be um, very busy. What happened is a lot of comics moved here towards the tail end of the pandemic because you couldn't do comedy in L.A. And people heard you could do comedy here. Right. So that's one thing. It's a big it's a big misconception that a lot of people, a lot of the comics moved here because Rogan did. Um, like that, that might be true of the big names because he was convincing like, you know, Segura and them to move here. But um, but a lot of the other comics moved here just because you they they heard you could do comedy here, and you couldn't do the comedy in LA. It was atrocious. You you, you know th they were very strict, and especially strict on the comedy store. Like they wouldn't even let us do comedy in the parking lot with glass shields up. They said no, that's live entertainment. That don't count. And meanwhile, like there's a restaurant down the street from the comedy store called the Saddle Ranch. And they was full and popping. I mean, they had the glass shields, but it was they weren't fucking with them. They were outside in the parking lot with glass shields up, serving up food. But they had some weird rule about live entertainment. And so because what we were doing was live, we weren't allowed to do it. They, 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 shut, them, they shut that down. You know, um, they shut down. Doing it in the window. We would do, we were in the, does if you ever go to the comedy store, there's a big ass window on the patio where you can, you can basically, you can see the comic from outside. You can see them on stage. You're like behind them. And so we, we turned that comic around and put people on the outside patio. They shut that down. The city was really fucking with the comedy store. And comedy in LA was just, was just fucking miserable. So, you know, now we don't. Uh, so, so anyway, point is, um, a bunch of my friends moved out here. Um, I was about to be real busy because I was recording my Netflix half hour, and um, and you know, my friend, no, Derek Poston, Asana Mod, uh, um, they, they, Jeffrey Burner, they all moved out here, and Tom Segura moved out here, who's also the homie. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm a, um, and I had a gig coming up in, I don't know, Houston or something like that. And so I was like, I'm going to slide through, you know, say what's up with the homies. Ooh. And then apparently somewhere in the middle of that, Segura told Rogan that he needed to check me out. So when I got here, Rogan hit me up. I was like, come through. And this was, this was way before the mothership existed. This was um, when they were doing shows at the Vulcan. Um, and uh, the Vulcan in the Creek in the Cave. And uh, <clears throat> you know, and I came through, you know, rocked the mic real quick. He was like, "Oh yeah, you you got it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me know whenever you let me know whatever you need. Yeah, I got you. Cause cause that cause that's that's a I think that's a big thing people don't realize about uh about uh Joe is like that motherfucker love the game. Like if he think you funny, 
he fuck with you. It, it's just that simple, you know, bearing some reason not to. And that was that was really all it was. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, and then it was all type of shit with the, you know, and then and then what happened is I I went I went back to uh, L.A. And, and you have to understand, like. The, the way the whole game works is like usually like in in town, meaning like the city you live in where you work out your stuff, you're working out stuff, you're going all around the city on a nightly basis working out material so when you go on the road that's where you make most of your money at um you know so it's like you know the whole it, the, the getting spots in town and by in town i just mean not on the road is precious and um and like i said it just wasn't that many spots so i'm, I'm you know i'm on the road and i'm coming back to la and it ain't no it ain't no spots you know and then it, and then it slowly started to open up and i you know, and I would come down here, have a great time, go back there, and there wasn't no spots. And and I, and I was like, why the fuck am I? Like, why the fuck do I keep? Because you know, if you, if you think of like your LA is your home base, it's like you flying out, flying back, flying out, flying back, flying out, flying back, right? It's like, you know. So I would have times where like I was only back for like a day. You know what I mean? Like I'm only back for one day, and I and I, and I, and I'm out. And uh, and like I said, it just didn't seem like a smart routine. It was like I would come back to L.A. and be kind of miserable because remember, this is L.A. Like towards the end of the pandemic, I would come back, be kind of miserable, go back on the road, come back, be a little. And every time I came out here, I had a blast, and all my friends was here, and so it just made sense to come out here. And um, and yeah. So anyway, long story short, fast forward to the future. Um. The mothership is not just uh, uh, something we talking about. It's like actually happening and we're seeing it and we're walking through and looking at the construction and making stuff. And, uh, and uh, I forget how the conversation came up about bottom of the barrel. Um, but it was actually Joe's idea. He was like, yo, you should host that. Like host that. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Like that's, that's kind of up my wheelhouse. And then it just kind of, you know, I didn't expect it to be so popular, but it, it is it is one of the more popular shows other than, you know, Kill Tony. Uh, I guess those are the only two non-traditional stand-up shows, really. But yeah, it's 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 great. And I you know, and I do it every and, and so yeah, like I said, the answer is all of the above. It's all those things. Relationships with Adam, Rogan, proximity, all those things. Um I hope that answers your question. All right. <clears throat> Next one. Who we got here? Devin here, okay, writing from the Seattle area. I've seen you twice, once in Seattle and recently in Tacoma, longtime listener and boutique fan. I like that. It's a, it's a pleasure being part of your journey. I'll keep this short. My girlfriend has cats who I love and adore. I see where this is going. Uh, let me guess, she loved them cats more than you. Let's see. Okay, we don't have kids. Uh-oh. So they're like our equivalent, okay? They're indoor cats with lots of pent-up energy. That's a problem. Early in the morning, around 3 to 6 a.m., they come into our room, scream, crawl on us, and do other cat shenanigans. This is an issue because I'm a light sleeper and get irritated while she can fall right back to sleep. She doesn't like closing the door because she doesn't want to hurt their feelings. Imagine that, folks. She don't want to hurt their feelings. So you can't get no sleep. Okay, that to me that's a, that's a, that that's a that's a problem. This is an issue because I'm a light sleeper and get irritated while she can get right. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. and she doesn't want me to. She doesn't want me using earplugs because one of the cats tries to eat them and then throws up. My dude, you got to break up with this girl. Like if this is actually like a like a no like no compromise. Nah, nah, nah. You gotta break up with this woman. Um, you you can't you can't these cats are disturbing your your peace. They're disturbing your rest. You can't you can't close the door because it might hurt their feelings. And you can't use earplugs. So you have to suffer so the cats are fuck that. Listen, let me tell you something. I have my own cat and she tries all that other shit. But cats know, listen, this is something I had and I have I've had to explain this to several people. 
you cannot train a cat, right? Your cat is training you. Don't forget that. At all times, your cat is trying to figure out what behaviors are going to get them what they want. Right? You know, in a way you can say, maybe you can say you're training each other. But unlike, you know, the difference between a dog and a cat is that a dog cares about you being pleased. That's why you can train a dog. A dog gives a fuck what you want. Right. They're they're trying to make their goal is to make you happy so they can get what they want. Right. Your cat doesn't give a fuck about your happiness. Your cat's goal is to get what they want by any means necessary. And so. And so if if your cat has figured out that to get what they want, they got to wake your ass up at 3 a.m., they're going to wake your ass up every day at 3 a.m. If you get up and feed them at 3 a.m., they're going to they're going to be expecting that from that point forward. So, you know, so that's my point is like the reason it hurts the cat's feelings that you won't close the door is because you never close the door. You got you have to break out of the brainwashing. OK, and, and, and listen, for whatever reason, women, they fall under the spell of cats so easily. I have no idea what it is where it's like I literally see. I've never seen because, you know, people joke about how the Internet is mostly cats and porn, right? Even the most terrible behavior that I've seen online from cats, there's, I I would, you can bet your bottom dollar there are several women in the comments defending it, no matter what the fucking cat did. That cat could hop into a baby bassinet and, and fucking rip that baby's throat open. And there's still be women in the comments like, well, what did they do to irritate him? So, you know, like, the, I, I don't get it. I've had to argue, I've had to argue with bitches about my cat. Wait, she's just, no, she's not. Leave her alone. She taking advantage of you because you here. She don't do that shit when it's just me. You know what I mean? Like, anyway, um, I don't mean to jump to conclusions about your girl, but it's like, I'm willing to bet she's not going to compromise. And, 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 and bro, all you're going to do is build up silent resentment and you're going to end up breaking up anyway, way later down the line. And it's going to be a fuck, it's going to be terrible. The longer you let the resentment build up, you know, because, because, because what you, because you're talking about a woman that don't care if you rest or not because she wants a cat to be happy. If that can't change, it's not going to work anyway. You're just going to slowly fucking, you're going to slowly start to hate the cats and slowly start to hate the woman until you get to the point where she's going to, she's going to say some shit that she's going to say some shit that trigger you and it's going to be a bad breakup. You know, because right now she's disregarding your needs. You know, sleep is like one of those basic joints. You know, it, it would be no difference if than if every time you sat down at the dinner table, the cat came in and fucking shit in your plate. You know, and she's like, oh, I don't want to hurt his feelings. Well, well, what you mean, bitch? I got to eat. What you talking about? You know what I mean? So I'm, you know, let me read the rest of your letter. <clears throat> In the first couple of minutes um, after being woken up, I can be very rude to her regarding the cats. When this happens, I regret it because it hurts her feelings. I've wondered if this is my real unfiltered self. I know you have cats. Have you experienced something similar? Any recommendations? Looking forward to the next time you're in Washington. Keep it tight, beaver puss. Okay, yeah. See, but th so think about that. Twice now, right? Twice in this email, feelings have been mentioned. Right? The cat's feelings and her feelings. Where are your feelings in that list of priority? That's what I'm trying to say. You're trying, because this sounds like you want some real, you know, like you really in love with this woman. I understand that. That's the only reason you're putting up with this. You're con you're convincing yourself that it don't, you're trying to talk yourself out of this bothering you. But there's a small nugget of you deep down. You what you need to do is sit down and 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 really express to your woman that it's a problem. You know what I mean? You're considering her feelings, she's considering the cat's feelings, who's considering your feelings? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You need sleep, my nigga. You can't you know, are you going are you going to be able to put up with this for the rest of your life? If like if this is 
this is long term. This is your forever person, potentially. No, I mean, I wouldn't. I don't know what you're willing to do, but you do need to have this conversation at the very least. I'm Because my advice is always leave that motherfucker. But, but I don't mean just pack up and leave. I mean, you need to set a boundary. Like, hey, listen, the cats can't come in the fucking room while I'm trying to sleep. Period. Right? And we can't put earplugs in because they'll eat them. Well, bitch, what you want me to do then? You want me to just not sleep? Because I just, I could, I would not be able to get past this. You have to have that talk. And you have to have like the real talk. Not the fucking pussy wimp talk where you're, stop thinking about her feelings. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You have to tell the real truth without, with no consideration for how she feels. Because that's the only way she going to understand. Because she know how you feel, my nigga. That's my point. She know exactly how you fucking feel and she and she doesn't. And as long as you let her not have, as long as you allow her to behave as though your feelings are the least consideration, then it's going to get worse and worse. You got to fucking put this ba- put this line in the sand right fucking now. <laughs> this is one of those times where I wish I had a relationship expert because I'm not one of them. You know what I mean? I'm just a real nigga with some analytical mind. But I don't know if I'm telling you the right thing, but th- I'm just telling you what I, where I, what kind of time and I'm going to be on. Like, no, bitch, the, what the cats want don't matter more than me. What are we talking about? You know, my what my cat want don't matter more than what I want. You know what I mean? Like, fuck that. What do you mean? I can't sleep? If my cat was doing anything where I regularly couldn't sleep, we I would make a change immediately. You know what I mean? Like, there's no way that I'm going to let that shit slide. I got to sleep, eat, shit, fuck, all that. The, the animals can't disturb none of that. You know what I mean? So I, you know, or or you know, or it's gonna get petty, my nigga. It's gonna get petty. Where you like, yo, every time the cat wake me up, I'm gonna wake you up. If I'm up, you up, bitch. Until we solve this problem, I bet you it'll be a problem then. If every time the cats woke you up, you woke her up, I bet you, I bet you she, I bet you she close that motherfucking door. Yo, no, we everybody up in this motherfucker. Since it's no big deal. Everybody up in this bitch. You know, we don't want to hurt the cat's feelings. See, that, see, it's going to get petty like that. You, it, and, then, and then you're in a relationship with, with, with somebody that you, that, that's adversarial. You're in an adversarial situation. You don't want to be. It's going to get to that. I'm trying to tell you some good shit. It's going to get to that. You know, with this beautiful girl that you're so in love with. It's going to get to that point where you're like, oh, bitch, you really don't give a fuck. Okay. All right. See, I'm, that's, how, that's me. I, and so, you know, <clears throat> I hope that helps you out there, Beaver Puss. Keep it tight. Mm. Hi again, Brian. Oh, again. I really enjoyed Bottom of the Barrel on October 1st. Mm. I was one of the three black people in the audience. Watch you go in on the drunk white woman and convince her boyfriend of one month to drop her ass. Best night ever. I plan to see the show again the next time I have business in Austin. Thanks. Um, I don't know if you want me to say your, say your name is Howard, but I appreciate you. Um, yeah, this is, you know, sometimes hecklers get out of control. Um, and, and I tell you what, man, being in the comedy audience, sometimes, man, that shit reveal your character. It really does. And this lady was just, I don't know what was on it. Cause she claimed she wasn't drunk, but she was sure enough acting weird, you know, and I just got tired of it. And I'm not the one you want hecklers. I'm not the one you really want. So, you know, this ain't a, this ain't TikTok. I'm, I'm going to hurt your feelings. Now, I'm one of those people where I'm never going to be disrespectful. I'm never going to be disrespectful to you off the top. You know what I mean? I'm, I am I give a lot of people a lot of rope. You know what I mean? But it's like, but if I feel like your attitude is fuck this show and fuck you, then it's real easy for me to be mean to you. You know? So <clears throat> that's what happened. She experienced it. It happens. Legendary clapbacks. They happen from time to time. Uh, okay, next email. Hey, Brian. We hope you love honey as much as we do. I recently created honey with my college roommates because we saw a gap. Uh, We formulated the first organic honey and electrolyte-based energy gel. We'd love to send you a free box to try out. All I ask is you quickly throw it on your Instagram story with a commission code. From there, we can chat about how we can collaborate and help more. Uh, what? No, nigga. What? Is this the? <laughs> Listen, guys. Is this the email you sending to everybody? 
hey, we would love you to give us some free advertising and then later on we can talk about. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do that. I mean, send me, you can send me the honey and if I like it, I'll talk about it. Don't, don't send this email to people, okay? Because if you stand behind your product, this thing, these things happen without being said. But if you ask him for stuff, because um, because the thing is, I don't want the honey. You understand what I'm saying? You offer me something that I d- that I didn't want for something that you want. You know what I mean? That's the, 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 like because I don't know who you used to dealing with, but people on people in my position and and in, in in the sense of like um, that like have a fan base and all this other stuff. People are always asking you for stuff. You know? And, and not that there's anything wrong with asking, but I just mean, if you really believe in your product, you shouldn't have to ask me to do free advertising for you. Just send, just send it. And if I, if I like it, I'll talk about it. Or I'll, or I'll share it with somebody else and they'll talk about it. But I'm not going to, you know, I don't, I don't want the honey. So you, me agreeing to give, give you something in return for something that I didn't even want in the first place. That's that doesn't make any sense, you know. <laughs> anyway, you can send it to the mothership if you want me to try it out. You can send it to the look up the mothership's address. Um, oh, this that was an old email. This is a quick follow up. Um, click on our affiliate link. No, I'm not doing all that. Um, you know, listen. If you want to send out the honey, that's fine. But I'm not filling out forms. I'm not retweeting shit. You know, uh, I'm sorry. This and this is a bad strategy, by the way. I don't know what whatever business class professor told you to do that shit is full of shit. All right. <clears throat> Last email. Oh, wait a minute. Let me not. Smorgasbord. Okay, no. <clears throat> Good day, Mr. Simpson. Love your special and your haircut was phenomenal. Worth every ounce of gay. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to ask if you noticed a wave of mediocrity in the gaming industry, notably with failures like Concord, which is a hero shooter that tried to differentiate itself with, and you'll love this, cutscenes. Yep. Every week for an online-only game. Yeah. Also, with Ubisoft stock plummeting, what do you think is going on in these developers' offices blowing millions of dollars on games people don't want? Perhaps money laundering? Help me out. Thanks. Um, I think it's very simple. I think what what's happened is and this this happens in every industry it's it's a balance that needs to happen right is that you have to understand that the people that make games are not the people that decide the people with the money want to make decisions right that that's why I always say listen this is not just video games this is all art music comedy movies everything Show business, and now the games business is show business. Don't make any mistake about it. And show business is the reason it fucks so many people up in the head is because before you get to into where it's business, but when you're just making art, good art is about vulnerability, right? Good art comes from a place of vulnerability. It's like I'm, I'm. An artist is somebody that can look at something and see something else and show it to you, show other, translate it for what's up here. And you have to be honest about that. You have to be honest about what's up here to translate it so other people can see it, right? Anyway, good art is about vulnerability. Good business is the opposite. It's about protecting yourself, hedging your bets, being cutthroat, taking event, right? And and show business is where those two things clash together. Because you can't make good art on a large scale without big money. And you and you getting big money from people that don't give a fuck about art. They give a fuck about getting their money back and making more. So you you know, and the games industry is probably the most um it's probably the most straightforward version of that where it's like i mean look even space marine too so so here's here's another thing it's just in 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 all of show business when you when something great comes out just know that it was much greater before that 
it stayed, it was so great that it stayed great in spite of the money people having an influence. Because, and, and I don't blame them. It's like, if I give you a million dollars to make something, and I walk in while you're making it, and if something's red that I think should be blue, you changing that shit. You know what I mean? You're changing it to blue. That's how some people feel. There are some people like, I'm hands off. I, this is what I do. If I ever hire an artist, I never, I'm never over their shoulder seeing what they're doing. I tell them my general idea, and I go, let me just see what you come up with from your imagination. I, I'm not here to just tell you what to do step by step by step by step. You know, and if you accept the fact that if you commission an artist, what they make isn't going to be exactly what you what you envision. It's going to be, it's partly your, it's a small piece of what you wanted with combined with their artistic brilliance. That's what you, that's what, that's what I'm paying for if I pay an artist for something. Um, but the overwhelming majority of people that are spending their money, they don't give a fuck about none of that. You know, so like, like I said, even Space Marine 2, um, it's going to go down as one of the best games ever, but you can see, you can see little times in the game where you can see where they had to cut a corner or where they had to rush, where they had to rush through something because a money person is like, I don't give a fuck about none of that. You know, bring on the microtransactions, bring on the, all the things gamers hate because, because, you know, for the longest time gamers were putting up with that. Now people aren't now. No, nobody got no money. Right. Everyone's having trouble selling tickets, or at least more trouble than they were before. Musicians, comedians, the circus, everything. People don't have money to just be wasting on bullshit. So, uh, like I said, you, you're dealing with people that have money that like they've bought their way into the position they're in. And they and they they have is they have more say so than you do. And that, and it's very easy for them to fool themselves into thinking they have as much expertise as you do. Do you, you feel me? I can't tell you how many times I've met somebody that's like that went from like working at Arby's to a mail room to someone's assistant to uh, you know executive vice president of cartoons or whatever the fuck or something. And they've been doing that. For, they've been they was an assistant six months ago. Now they're an executive, right? And they will, and they think that that position gives them that expertise. So they'll sit there and argue with. They'll argue with me about what's funny, <laughs> right? You understand what I'm saying? Like, like I said, you know, two three years ago they was working at Arby's. Six months ago they was an assistant answering phones. And now they 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 the executive vice president of funniness at a. You know, at filling the network, and so they think because they're the executive vice president of funniness that they are actually an expert on what's funny, and they will they will argue from that position, you know, and it's and it's all because they went to fucking NYU, like they were in the same writing class with the with the last motherfucker that was the executive vice. You know what I'm saying? It's like shit like that. It's like. They, they don't have any expertise, but their position allows them to behave as though they do. And they have more influence than you do. So it's no different in the game industry is my point, is the people with the money, however they got in the position that they're in, they are convinced that they that they know better than you. And it's because they their goal is to make money, not to make something dope. And we're, and we're coming to a reckoning where they're going to have to make dope shit to make money like it used to be. We just got to take a chance and make a game, try something different and, 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 uh, and hope it makes money, you know, instead of trying to do what everyone else is already doing to, to make money. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, so the game industry isn't failing, but that bullshit, it ain't working no more. You know, the, the, the last the space Marine two and hell divers two are two games that were made by small studios that they didn't expect to be shit and they blew the fuck up. Right? And Concord is a giant game with a $300 million budget, eight years of development. And I think at, at, at their peak, they had like 900 players concurrent on Steam. You know? And so I don't even, I don't even know, you know, my... I think I've been on Steam for 21 years or something like that. I have so many gaming and, you know, and that, that I got, you know, I got the Steam, I got the Ubi launcher, I got Epic Game Launcher, I got all of the launchers 
with all my various friends across them all, and I don't know a single fucking person that played Concord. You know, 21 years of gaming friends. I've never seen nobody playing Concord. Because it tells you when you log on what your friend's doing. I ain't seen nobody playing that shit. I ain't heard nobody talking about it. You know, that's another thing. I don't know what they marketing shit was on, but I didn't hear nobody talking about it. I didn't even know. I didn't know Concord was out till it failed. You know? And I think they, um, you know, they, they, if, they'd have gave, if they'd have gave it away for free, they, they, they would have probably survived. But the fact that they tried to charge full charge like they blizzard, charge full price and, no, no, you can't do that, brother. You can't do that, brother. Ew. Ew, brother. You can't do that. So, um, I guess that's, yeah, that's my, that's my show business rant. It's, it's, it's happening all across show business is that, like I said, um, people devoid of ideas are, are convinced that they are the source of things and artists want unlimited budgets to implement unlimited ideas. And both of those things have to be kept in check. But oftentimes, the artist is the one being kept way, 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 way in check. So you have to have such a brilliant idea that even after all the bullshit, it's still brilliant. Trust me when I tell you, ask anybody that's been in show business, they'll tell you. It's a miracle. If a show even makes it to the air, it's a miracle. And if it's fucking amazing, that's even more of a miracle. Because trust me, that meant it had to be fucking incredible on paper. At some point, it was incredible. And some fucking idiot that everyone has to listen to fucking ruined it. But it was so incredible that they couldn't ruin it. That's all it was. Everything dope is that, unless it's independent. Everything dope that came out, is it was doper. Trust me. All right. Um... <laughs> You know, it, it, you know, independent is a, is a, you know that's that's the way to go. I think, you know, um, let me do a couple of articles here. We at the thirty eight. Mm-hmm. Let me see who we got going on here. New tablet. Oh yeah, tech time. Tech time. I upgraded to the um, Samsung S ten Ultra tablet. It's very much like um, last year. In fact, I'm pretty sure the accessories from last year fit this tablet, which I don't think Samsung's ever done that. But that's one of the things where it's like, you got to be customer centric if you're trying to make money nowadays. You can't, all that fuck shit, it can't slide no more. Um, it's faster. It's better looking screen. It's nicer speakers, longer battery life, faster charging time. It's better in all those ways. I always get the Samsung tablet, just like I always get the Samsung phone. I was very close to switching to Apple earlier this year, but I, you know, I forgave, I forgave and I got over it. Um, that's my take time. Still haven't tried out the Azeron. I still can't think of the name of this fucking book. I still haven't tried this out yet. Um, it's it's one of them things where I feel like, because I'm on the road now for the next, I don't know, seven weeks or something. I feel like I'm going to wait. I got to wait till I got a long stretch where I can really get into it, you know, but it's coming. Um, another new tech thing. I'm Oh, yeah, I have the, there's a BenQ light bar that goes a tough, across the top of your, your monitor. Um I didn't know I needed it. It was it's an excellent addition to the to the to the desk. I don't know, and I can't explain to you why it's awesome. Like why having that light above the monitor, why that's awesome. I can't explain to you why it is, but I know when it's not when it's off, I feel it. And when it's on, I feel that. And I can't and it's I don't know. I can't explain it, but it's better in all the ways. I can see stuff. My there's less strain on the eyes. It, it has automatic adjustments and shit. Um, you motherfuckers should me some money. But those are my newest gadgets that I can think of off the uh, off the top of my head. Now, pet lost for thirty years found alive in owner's attic. What? What pet last? What pet lived for thirty years? It's got to be a fucking turtle or something. As sad as it can be, pet went missing. Oh, it was. It was a tortoise. Nigga, that ain't special. <laughs> you right? 
The Taylor Swift guitar smashed by a man after paying $4,000 for it was not autographed by a singer. Why is that news? A man who for some reason smashed up a guitar with a hammer in Texas may have thought it had been signed by Taylor Swift, but it was not in a video. Why? I don't understand. Okay, so they auctioned the guitar. This man bought it at the auction. White-haired man shuffles up to grab the guitar and smashes it with a hammer to the cheers of the assembled crowd. What? Oh, man. these This is like professional hatership. Oh, I get it. This is a Republican thing. Okay, you smashing something you bought. For, for what? Like, what? <laughs> this reminds me when people's like pouring out cans of beer because of the trans people, like burning Nikes. Whatever. I was like, you bought those. That doesn't make any sense. Burn down a Nike store if that's how you feel. You know what I mean? But, but how is you smashing? A guitar you paid four thousand dollars for. What what is what are you what is that saying? What are you getting out of that? You're saying I'm I'm so Republican I'll fucking break my own shit. That's what I'm seeing. You look like a fool to me. I mean, you you have every right to hate Taylor Swift, you know, or you have every right to hate her political opinions or whatever. But you out here breaking your own stuff. And you didn't even certify that it was actually a Taylor Swift guitar. You just got got for four thousand dollars. You just got got. This is a new scam. This is my new scam. I'm going to start. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm going to start selling these extreme conservative people shit that they think belong to people they don't like. I'm like this. This is this is a George Soros handkerchief. This is an Obama uh, an Obama flat screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ten thousand dollars. Yeah, this was the actual flat screen that Obama was looking at when they killed Osama bin Laden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OLED. <laughs> Just so you can buy it and smash it like an idiot. It was like I don't get it. I, I'm, I'm, I need to start a new hustle. Um, mom to pay son for throwing out comics. What? <sighs> Oh, this is from this is from China. Okay, well, that, but listen, am I surprised? So I guess, I guess women not like to see a man enjoying himself is is cultural culturally universal. Um, man, eighty. All right, one last one. Bank of America outage put some account balances to zero. Wait a minute, are you telling me that Bank of America was involved in some shady activities? Let's see. We are temporarily unable to retrieve all of your accounts, says an alert on the bank's website. Actually, I see that quite often. A Bank of America outage has resulted in some accounts showing zero account balances. The outage started around 9, p- no, 9 a.m. on Wednesday. Oh, well, that's today. All of my accounts suddenly show zero. Uh oh. Wait a minute, what what just happened? <laughs> my money's gone, but conveniently my debt is still there. Yeah, everything he owes still in it. <laughs> my nigga say, yo, all my debt still there. <laughs> that debt ain't get set to zero, motherfucker. You got that right, it did. Five accounts show zero balance, over 20K, been on hold for 30 minutes, and they removed the chat function. The outage seems to have also ensnared Zelle, the digital payment network that Bank of America owns with other banks. I tried to do a Zelle payment and insufficient funds. Wow. Bank of America didn't immediately respond to a request for comment, making the source of the outage unclear. In the meantime, the company's website is displaying account balances from yesterday. Boy, listen, let me tell you something. Why, this is why I will never, ever, 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 ever do business with Bank of America. When I first got a... Uh, not when I first, but like shortly after I got out of the military, I found myself working at the Pentagon. And there's a couple of banks inside the place. And Bank of America was one of them, so I did business with them. And this is when they first started um, 
um, this is when things first kind of started getting digital in that way, where you're like on your phone and shit like that. And I remember these these motherfuckers, th- they started doing this thing where they would, I think maybe I have explained this before, but they would rearrange. See, see, when I first was an adult, if you went and bought something, like if you went and bought something and then checked your balance, that money would be out of your account and it would show your actual balance. Then they then when shit went digital, they started um they started holding money and rearranging the transactions so that the bigger ones would hit first. Right? And they had they had some bullshit ass reason for this. But this is also when they invented overdraft fees. So the the strategy was to try to get you to overdraft. Right. And, and 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 what do I mean by that? So, you know, overdraft protection is what they would call it. So it sounds like, oh, OK. So, you know, if I got, you know, if I got five dollars and I spend 10, they'll cover it for me and I just owe them twenty dollars. That's OK. Just that's a nice little cushion to have just in case. Right. But uh, but what would happen is. You know, say you had. uh you know, say you had ten dollars in your bank account, and on Wednesday you spent five dollars, right? And on and so now you got five dollars left, right? And on Thursday you spent two dollars, um, right? So now you got three dollars left, and on Friday you spent two dollars, so now you got a dollar left, right? But on Wednesday, I mean, but on Saturday, you spent $10. Well, you only had $1 and you spent $10. Okay, so now you owe an overdraft fee, right? When you The next time you get paid, you owe $30. But no, no, you don't. Because what Bank of America started doing was they would, they would put that, they would rearrange and put that $10 first. <laughs> so now it looks like you had no money when you spent five, two, and three dollars. So now you owe three overdraft fees, even though you actually only overdrafted once. So now you owe sixty dollars. Or six or plus whatever all the other all the other transactions are. And they was and they were doing this and doing this and doing this. And I'll never forget going to the bank and like complaining about it. And this was the first time twice in my life somebody from a professional place has said it to me and it was both banks. Bank of America and USAA. But this bitch goes, well, if you were better at managing your money. I was like, what does that have to do with you stealing from me? <laughs> right? And I think three or four years later, they lost a class action lawsuit for this very activity. And, you know, obviously they they end up only, they paid everybody two bucks or some bullshit. You know, they didn't have to, they didn't have to lose all the money they stole. So to them, it was, it was a calculated risk. It's like, and I'm telling you, to go back with that gaming question, it's going to get to the point where people are so fed up, people going to start hurting these people. <laughs> these banking execs and shit like that, people going to start hurting them motherfuckers. I'm trying to tell you some good shit. Because even the racial stuff ain't keeping up. Y'all, y'all understand that like, racism in this country was only stoked to keep poor people fighting each other. And, and that's, the, that's, really, that's the real reason that the powers that be want it to persist, right? But at some point, at some point, it's going to be unity amongst the poor, and they're going to come for y'all ass. They, they coming for your ass. And, and, and I don't know if it's going to be physical violence or whatever necessarily, but I mean, it's, the way things are going, it's unsustainable to keep letting these motherfuckers get away with shit. Why are their account balances at zero? I guarantee you, this is going. This is a bigger scandal than what it seemed like. This is more than just an error, to me. I think that money gone. If this man showing his account balances is all zero, but his debts are still there, then what? Then, then how is this? How is this a system error? Where that money at? Did or did they get hacked? Did they get revealed? Where that money at? Like, cause, cause. I don't know if y'all realize that every time in this country a bank goes belly up or something like that, something to that effect happens with a bank. They re- they never have to explain to nobody. Right? 
like they they never they never have to uh to have to be accountable to like hey where that money at nigga they don't ever got to tell you that they, 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 every time everybody money go missing they stop answering phones they not making no comments or nothing they don't got to tell you where the money at they wait till the government make them that's the shit that pissed me off i would i would set a bank on fire if i thought i could get away with it i swear to god not the not the bank bank but the headquarters like where they don't even keep no money at just go find a, a, a bank egg and just burn it. You know, hopefully with executives inside. You know, and when they scream for help, I'm going to be like, uh, we ain't no statements. No, that's okay, Brian, stop that. That's not, I do not condone, um, I do not condone, uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this episode for this week. Don't forget, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you want advice from the advice champ, go ahead and email me at bswithbriansimpson at gmail.com. bswithbriansimpson at gmail.com. You want to come see me on tour, go to briansimpsoncomedy.com, okay? Or follow me on socials at BS Comedian. Uh, um, and uh, if you want to support the show, like, share, subscribe, comment. And I appreciate you. Keep it tight, Beaver Puss. <laughs>